Good day to you one and all. I'm Axel Wilkinson, and right now we're looking at a clip that shows some dramatic lighting created in hit film. Lighting is going to be the subject of our tutorial this time around. I'm going to assume you already have some knowledge of hit film's 3D capabilities, so we're just going to jump right into the good stuff. When you create a 3D scene in hit film, you can use light layers to dramatically illuminate the scene. Now light layers will only affect 3D layers in your composite. If you have 2D layers, they display the same no matter what the lighting setup is. And actually, before you add lights, 3D layers are the same way. I constructed this room out of 3D planes, using four different planes to create the walls and floor, and then a whole bunch of other planes through the middle here, uh, just lined up. In fact, if I switch views, there it's just a room filled with a whole bunch of planes receding back to give us depth. Since we haven't added any lights to this scene yet, everything is illuminated very evenly. There's no highlights or shadows or anything, and this is convenient for being able to see everything clearly within your scene. But we can also dramatically light our scene using light layers. Now the only way to create lights is from this new layer menu on the timeline. Click there, you can see the light object. Or as a keyboard shortcut, you can press Ctrl-Alt-L. So let's create a new light layer and notice how the lighting in our scene changes when we do so. Now that we have our layer created, we can go into the controls panel, and in the layer properties, the type menu allows us to choose what type of light we're working with. So we're going to go through these options one at a time, and as we do so, notice how the light properties and the transform properties for the layer change based on the type of light that we've selected. Let's start at the beginning and choose ambient. There are only two controls for ambient lights, the color and the intensity of the light. You can change the color if you wish to tint the light. For example, if we just open this up and pick blue, you can see everything in the scene is going to be tinted that color because it has a blue light shining on it. Uh, you can change that color to anything you want if you wanted to create dramatic stage lighting type effects or things of that sort. Um, you can easily change the color of the light. The default white setting provides more natural, accurate colors. You probably noticed that all of these planes that make up our scene are brighter with the ambient light, and that's controlled by the second control, the intensity. So if you don't want your light to be quite as bright, you can turn the intensity down, and actually at a setting of 40, the ambient light matches the appearance of if there was no lights at all. If I turn this light off, you can see there's no change there. If you turn intensity all the way down, of course, now the light's turned off. And just like turning the light off in a real room, everything goes black. So those are the only controls we have for an ambient light, the color and the intensity. You'll notice there isn't even any transform controls for ambient lights because they are essentially everywhere. No matter where you are in your scene, there's not a point the light is emanating from. It's shining on every object in your scene from all sides. And so as a result, it creates a very even light and can be very useful as a fill light just to make sure everything in your scene is visible. All right, the next type of light we have in our menu is a point light, which you might remember was the default option when you create a new light. And a point light is similar to if you are holding just a naked light bulb in your hand, or you might compare it to the sun but the light shines out in every direction from a specific point. And you can set it up so that the farther you get from that point, the dimmer the light gets. One of the other differences between point lights and the ambient light is that with point lights, you can create shadows. So as we look at the properties in the light controls, you can see the color and intensity are still there. But as we turn the intensity up, we still have shadows in these corners created by the light. And you'll notice these planes are illuminated differently based on their angle relative to the light position. We also have some new controls for the point light. Cast shadows is the master control for whether or not this light will create shadows among other objects. And we'll get into shadows in greater detail in the second half of this tutorial. Fall off and reach work together to control the area that your light will affect. Fall off describes the behavior where the further light travels from its source, the dimmer the light gets. And reach sets the distance beyond which the light will have no effect at all. The fall off menu gives you a few different ways to control 
how the falloff behaves in hit film. Now to help you understand these better, I've created a nifty graphic, which will hopefully make it clear. So with falloff set to none, the light stays the same intensity no matter how far the light travels. It's not how real lights work, but it is super convenient for lighting a 3D scene because you don't have to worry about how close the lights are to the other objects. Linear and curve give your virtual lights fall off, so they behave more like real lights. With linear fall off, the behavior can be described by a simple angle. As you get farther away from the light source, the intensity of the light decreases. At twice the distance, you get half as much light. Curved fall off gives the most accurate simulation of real lights. The curve which gives this type of fall off its name follows the inverse square law, which you can look up if you want more technical information on it, but basically what it amounts to is this. At twice the distance from the light source, you get one quarter as much light. And so every time your distance doubles, the amount of light you receive is quartered. It's a little bit more confusing than the linear fall off, but what it boils down to is you lose light very quickly as you move away from the light source in the exact same fashion as real world lights. So let's compare these types of fall off in hip film. And as I select linear from this list, notice how the planes that are farther away from the camera toward the back of the room get darker as the light falls off. Now, because our reach is set to 1000, within 1000 pixels the light is gone entirely. But we can increase the reach to extend the range that that light will travel and illuminate the scene. As we switch from linear to curved, again, as we get farther from the light, things are going to get darker more quickly. The difference between curved and linear is somewhat subtle, but if you're trying to replicate real lights as accurately as possible, then curved should be your weapon of choice. Shadow opacity and shadow diffusion give you control over the appearance of the shadows created by the light. So let's turn cast shadows on and you'll notice that nothing has happened and that's because within hit film you are able to control for every individual layer whether or not it casts shadows. So let's select these front planes here and actually these three boxes this is all one plane which I've divided into three parts using masks and then if we go into the materials controls for this layer and enable cast shadows now you can see that there's a shadows being cast onto our floor and the walls by that plane. So let's go back and select our light source. And now we can adjust the appearance of these shadows using these two controls. So if I adjust the opacity, that's going to just control how dark the shadow is. I can make a very faint shadow or a much darker shadow. And then shadow diffusion controls the softness of the edge. You can see at zero, we're giving a very hard shadow, but we can soften the edges of that shadow by increasing the shadow diffusion. And again, later in this tutorial, in the second half, we'll take a much more detailed look at creating shadows. Our next type of light is a spotlight. And you'll find that most of our light controls are looking familiar now. We have color and intensity still. The cast shadows option is still available. Fall off and reach are the same. And then our shadow controls down at the bottom. But the two new controls that we have for a spotlight that we haven't seen yet are the cone angle and the feather. And now before we adjust these, let's adjust the transform properties of our spotlight. The spotlight is very precise and directional, and so it only illuminates the small spot that you point it directly at. And so let's take this spotlight, and as we swing this up, notice that we can see that light now hitting the various elements in our scene as they fall within the spot that it creates. And now as we adjust the cone angle and the feather, you'll be able to clearly see the effect that these controls have. So the cone angle basically just changes the diameter of the spotlight. And so if we decrease that, we can make a much smaller, tighter spot, or we can increase that to make it affect a larger area. The feather controls the softness of the edge of the spot. So if we turn it down to zero, you can see we have a hard edge. Or if we increase that feather, now the light is brightest in the middle and gradually tapers off as we travel toward the edge of the spot. The transform properties are essentially the same as any other 3D layer in HIP film. They allow you to adjust the position and orientation of the light layer, either using the widgets here on the canvas 
or using the controls in the control panel. And you can adjust the rotation and orientation. There is also a target property in the transform controls and that links to the alignment property up in the layer properties area. Now if you have a directional light type selected such as spot or directional then in the alignment you can choose toward target position and then using the target property down in the transform controls you can assign the exact location of that target. So let's set our target to minus 2000 and now with the target set we can move the light and it's always going to stay pointed toward that specific spot that we specified. And so this can be very useful for when you want to create animation with moving lights but you want them to stay illuminating one fixed spot then you can just set that target position and then you're free to move the light however you want and it will continue illuminating the same area. Okay our final type of light is directional which is a bit unique in that it creates an infinite plane and then the light is emitted in one direction from that plane. And so all of the objects in front of the plane receive light equally from the same direction. Now to use a directional light, you have to set the alignment to towards target position. And then you can assign that target position or choose where it's pointed using the transform controls. And as you move the light now, it's shining onto everything in the scene from the same angle as if there were a infinite plane running through that point that's marking the light and the entire plane was sending forth light in one direction. So those are the various light types found in HitFilm and their respective controls. I'm going to end this tutorial here but as promised there will be a second half which goes into shadows in greater detail and how you can create and control shadows and then in that section we'll also look at materials properties for various layers and how those are impacted by the lighting as well. So again, thanks for watching and please subscribe so you don't miss part two of this tutorial or any of our new tutorials coming in the future.